I'm Susan Paddock. I'm currently the executive director of the Oka Institute, the brand new water institute that's three years old here at East Central University. The Oka Institute started in 2016, and it was really a result of a, a report that was done by the Ada Jobs Foundation. They did some strategic planning. It was called the TADZO report. And in it, it said that Ada was poised to become a water cluster. And when you think about what we have here in Ada, um, we have the Robert S. Kerr Environmental Research Center, the only EPA lab in, in Oklahoma. We have the city of Ada, who's very progressive in, in their water usage. We have home of the Chickasaw Nation. They're, they're known all across the state for their water planning and water sustainability issues. And so we have all these entities that came together with the university and all the expertise that's here. Uh, and the president at the time decided that we need to create um, a water institute. And the Water Institute is working back on the water cluster initiative along with research and all sorts of economic development issues, education, um, and policy development. So OCA was created uh, and we've gotten a lot done in three years. The OCA Institute aims to bring people together on water conservation and supplies regarding the Arbuckle Simpson Aquifer. Water supplies are about storage. Unless you live on a major river, you've got to store water between rainfall events for use when it's not raining. There's only two, two options you really have. You can store it in surface reservoirs, or you can store it in underground in aquifers. So an aquifer is a body of rock or other geologic material that can store and transmit groundwater. Uh, it does that through empty spaces, and those empty spaces can either be uh, interstitial spaces between sand or gravel, uh, it could be fractures, or it could be caves. So those are our three main porosity types. The Arbuckle Mountains actually have all three of them because the Arbuckles is actually a karst aquifer, at least two thirds of it is. It's the Arbuckle Mountains, right, our, our mountains. Um, so it is um, limestone, it's very uh, karst, if you will, Lo lots of holes in, lots of cracks and, and uh, fissures, if you will, in the aquifer, so the outcropping. Is, um, is, is rock and it's got a lot of, lot of uh, flow through systems. So it's very vulnerable to, uh, it, it certainly takes on water in, in storm events and um, it it's quickly, quickly recovers uh, from drought events when there's storm. You have these precipitation events, the water table is going to rise and we call that recharge. So we're recharging the aquifer. It's kind of like, think of it like recharging a battery. And then when we are decreasing the amount of water in an aquifer, we call that discharge. And that discharge happens in two ways. It happens naturally through springs or happens artificially through wells. So the springs are gonna be at a certain elevation and the water table is gonna be a little bit higher than it. So as, as the water table comes down to equilibrium with the springs at the same level, then we're gonna see stream flow diminish or just stop altogether. Now, if people are pumping on the water table, they could actually lower it further and drop that water level below the elevation of the springs. So you need more water after a precipitation event to bring that water table back up so that the springs will start flowing again. This particular aquifer is a considered a sole source, so there's really not a whole lot of options when it comes to alternate water supplies in, in an area. Sole source aquifer means it's the primary drinking water source for several counties, Pontotoc, Murray, and Johnston. There's about 175,000 people rely on the water out of uh, uh, the Arbuckle Simpson aquifer. A huge number of people in Murray County, Bryan County, uh, Carter County, um, Johnson County all rely on that water. This aquifer being the sole source of water for Ada, uh, if we do something wrong, if we mess it up, that's the end of Ada. That's the end of the town that, that my family's known since we became a state. So protecting the aquifer in general for uh, water for the people uh, and the wildlife in the area is very significant. When one of these resources is lost, either through contamination or over pumping and or salt water intrusion or the like, then it's essentially lost for your lifetime, probably your grandchildren's lifetime, and maybe forever. So when you have something, you need to protect it. controversy in 2002 when uh, local ranchers wanted to pipe the water from this aquifer that feeds our streams here at the park. They wanted to uh, pipe that up to Canadian County residents and sell it to them. 
they were proposing to, to pump a lot of water out, just a tremendous amount. And as you can imagine, the local residents uh, were not happy about that. <laughs> no one likes to have their water sent out of their area for one thing, but they also realized that if you start pumping the aquifer, there would be an impact to the springs and the streams coming from it. We were very frightened about what a mass movement of water out of our area would do to our water source. And so we set about to get the law changed. Um, and we're successful in that, in getting you know the recognition that we needed to understand what kind of ramifications a movement of that quantity of water would do to the area. They formed a group called the Citizens for the Protection of the Arbuckle Simpson Aquifer. And in 2002, they got a bill passed, Senate Bill 288. There was a lot of a lot of different people and a lot of different support that, that, that made it possible. Senate Bill 288 uh, was passed by the Oklahoma legislature in 2003 to really protect the, the long-term viability of that resource as a sole source aquifer. Which required the water board uh, to do a study on the aquifer to determine how much water could be pumped without uh, reducing natural flow to streams. So that was what instigated this Arbuckle-Simpson hydrology study. Um, in the phase one study, uh, the, the study's purpose was to determine maximum annual yield, the amount of water that could be taken from the aquifer. We put in the Mesonet, uh, Fitztown Mesonet Station. We put in several stream gauges. Um, we had scientists from around the country working on this from several different agencies, OSU, OU, the U.S. Geological Survey, the Water Resources Board, um, Department, I mean, um, Bureau of Reclamation. So there were several agencies and researchers that were involved with this, with this study. The legislation that said um, only so much could be taken and did actually the first study said that you couldn't interfere or degrade or diminish the springs and streams by more than 25%. So that means we have to be very careful where we take water out of the aquifer so that we don't interfere with that uh, spring or stream flow. Once OCA was created, we knew we needed to have all the right people around the table. And so we started with local entities like the Ada Water Resources Board and the City of Ada and the Robert S. Kerr Environmental Research Center. Uh, and, and so we invited local people to, to be our advisors, to be those advocates, to help us know what issues were important. And it's been two years in the process of coming up with a steering committee group that would develop the scope of work for the next stage of the Arbuckle Simpson hydrology study. We've got the phase two uh, study that, that, that is planned, but it hasn't been funded, for instance. And so I think that's, you know, the monitoring and the gauging and, and just the, um, you know, knowing the reality through these studies that the U.S. Geological uh, Survey provides and Bureau of Reclamation and Corps of Engineers and the Water Board and others um, do. I think, you know, when you're when you talk about um, kind of keeping the pulse and understanding the natural environment. It's a diverse group and we wanted that because what we want as a result of this study is really a management tool for all the stakeholders, whether it's municipalities, rural water districts, landowners, mining, whomever. We want all the stakeholders around the table help making those decisions and guiding the work of the study. The study is being done by USGS, and the reason we chose USGS is because they actually did the first study. The mission of the first study was to determine the amount of water that could be pumped without reducing flow to the streams and springs. This next one is focusing on protecting more site-specific springs. Phase two, um, the study, this next stage, now it's called a really long name, uh, but we call it the Eastern ASA Hydrology Study. Um, this purpose of this study is to do more of a site-specific look that tells us how we ensure that water flowing in those springs and streams is not interfered by our taking water out. Interestingly enough, it was a group of ladies, a service club called Seroptimus International of Ada, 
who um, began in the early 80s, and they decided that they would go for an EPA designation of sole source. And what they didn't realize is at the time is that they were starting to set the stage for all the things that have happened for the Arbuckle Simpson Aquifer. And so it's a continuum, and it's really, I think, very fortuitous that here we are sitting here 30 years later at the OCA Institute, the Water Institute here at East Central University. But a lot of the work that we are doing now goes back in tribute to what they started. I think you have to understand it's a continuing fight. This is our home. This is where we live. This is where we, we choose to live, where we choose to raise our families, um, run our businesses, and build our communities. It's really easy sometimes to take all that for granted. You take this for granted, all this beauty and all this water. You've lived here and it's just been an everyday occurrence, but you have no guarantees that that's gonna continue. Without water, there are no jobs here. There's a lot of problems. You got a lot of problems if you're a community leader. But if you don't have water, you only have one problem. Once groundwater is contaminated, it's just, it's just essentially lost for a lifetime. Be mindful, don't waste it. It's a precious resource and we're lucky to have it. We wouldn't, we wouldn't want to destroy the environment at, at, at all. It's just too, too beautiful. This is very important to us today and tomorrow. We have very wise citizens that want to be involved and make sure that we have this water sustainability that we have to have forevermore uh, in terms of prosperity, in terms of just living. We have to have water for life. <laughs> you can't give up.